Hello students, today I will tell you about the circle of Willis. So whenever you are having the blood supply of the brain, you will come across this term, what is the circle of Willis. So let's discuss about the basics of the blood supply and then we'll discuss about the blood uh, circle of Willis. So dear students, whenever you are talking about the blood supply of the brain, this blood is delivering the oxygen, glucose and other nutrients to the nervous tissue and along with this these delivery it is also removing the carbon dioxide lactic acid and other metabolite byproducts from the nervous system so the brain is supplied by the two major blood vessels internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery so this is the first and most important thing which you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the blood supply of the brain there are only two sources one is the internal carotid artery and another is the vertebral arteries. So there are total four arteries. You are having right and left internal carotid and right and left vertebral arteries. So these all the four arteries when they enter inside the cranial cavity they lies into the subarachnoid space. You know that there is an area between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater which is full of the CSF. So when the arteries enter into the cranial cavity, they enter into the subarachnoid space. Now these arteries give the branches and these branches will show the anastomosis on the inferior surface of the brain and that anastomosis we are going to discuss in term of circle of Willis. And this circle of Willis is also having the another name is circulus arteriosus. What is that? Circular, circulus arteriosus. So my dear students, when you will see the brain, you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the blood supply, you know that there is an entry of two vertebral artery through the foron magnum. And there is a one more thing is the entry of two internal carotid artery through the carotid canal. So all these four arteries when enter inside the cranial cavity, they are anastomos with each other on the inferior surface of the brain or on the base of the brain. So here you can see the inferior side. Now this is the important concept or it may be a question for your exam that you will not find any kind of the anastomosis on the any other surface of the brain. Majority anastomosis occurs basically on the base of the brain. Clear? Now, what is the location of this circle of Willis? Now, this circle of Willis located into the interpeduncular fossa and this interpeduncular fossa is again a feature on the inferior surface or the base of the brain and in the interpeduncular fossa, you are having a dilated part of the subarachnoid space and that is known as interpeduncular subarachnoid cistern. So what do you mean by the cistern? Cistern is nothing but these are the dilated subarachnoid areas. And the area of this subarachnoid space which lies in the interpeduncular fossa is known as interpeduncular cistern. So here you can see that this is your interpeduncular area. Now interpeduncular means the area lies between the two cerebral peduncle which are the part of midbrain. So in between these two crusts of the midbrain, you are having a dilated area of your subarachnoid uh, space and that is known as interpeduncular cistern. So if you will have this question in exam that what is the location of the circle of Willis, always you should reply that it is present on the base of brain and more specifically in the interpeduncular fossa. Now when we will talk about the formation of this circle, you have to keep in mind that it is an anastomosis between the two major system, carotid system and vertebral system. So you will have the internal carotid artery and from the vertebral system you will have the basilar artery. So these two arteries will anastomose and they are going to form a polygonal arterial arcade and this polygonal six sided arcade is labeled as a circle of Willis. So here in this uh, base of your brain, if you will see where you will find this polygonal arcade. So here you will have this polygonal arcade and this polygonal arcade is known as circle of Willis, clear? 
So till now what you have to remember that circle of villus is an anastomosis between the carotid system and vertebral system. It lies on the base of brain. It is a six sided polygonal circular arcade and the most important thing it lies in the interpedicular fossa. Now here in this video clip you should appreciate the entry of your internal carotid and vertebral arteries. So whenever you are having the base of the skull you know that in the base you will find the foron magnum on the posterior side and you will find here the carotid canal. Now when you will see the vertebral artery this vertebral artery is passing through the foramen transversorium of the cervical vertebrae, and then it will enter from both the side into the foramen magnum. So this is the one thing. Second thing is that this is your common carotid which is dividing into the external carotid and internal carotid. Now this internal carotid is going to enter inside the cranial cavity. So this is the important thing that these arteries, internal carotid arteries and vertebral arteries enter through the two foramen. What are the name? The vertebral foramen enter through the foramen magnum and the internal carotid artery enters through the carotid canal. Now which arteries contributing internal carotid and vertebral? So when you are talking about the contribution of internal carotid artery, when it enters inside the cranial cavity, its three branches contribute into the circle of villus. You know that internal carotid give many branches inside the cranial cavity. But in this formation of circle of villus, three branches of this internal carotid uh, contribute. So what are these three branches? One is posterior communicating artery and second is its two terminal branches which are known as middle cerebral and anterior cerebral artery. So these three branches of internal carotid artery going to contribute in the formation of circle of villus. So in this image if you will see what you will find that this is the lumen of internal carotid artery and you can you know that the internal carotid artery always make a loop inside your cranial cavity. Now this loop ends uh, under the anterior perforating substance level and here you can see that it is giving this anterior cerebral artery and you will have the middle cerebral artery. Apart from that it is also giving the posterior communicating artery. So this middle cerebral artery may be not the part of circle of villus. Clear? So the main trunk of internal carotid artery, this anterior cerebral artery and this posterior communicating artery are going to form the lateral part of this six sided polygonal arterial arcade. Now what is the contribution of vertebral artery? Now when we will talk about the contribution of vertebral artery, you know that vertebral arteries are two in number right and left. Now both arteries enter into the cranial cavity through foron magnum and on the ventral surface of bones you will have the formation of a common artery this common artery is known as basilar artery. At the upper border of the pons, this basilar artery divide into the two part which is known as posterior cerebral artery. So what is the contribution of vertebral artery? The contribution in the formation of circle of villus is the formation of basilar artery and second thing is that basilar artery terminate into the right and left posterior cerebral artery. So in nutshell, how many arteries are there in the circle of villus? So first is the anterior communicating artery, anterior cerebral artery, internal carotid artery, posterior communicating artery, posterior cerebral artery and basilar artery. So here in this image you can see that this is the basilar artery. This basilar artery is dividing into the two part with these are known as posterior cerebral artery. This is your internal carotid artery. This internal carotid is dividing into the two part anterior and middle cerebral. This middle cerebral is not considered as the formation of this six side hexagon but yes the branches which arises from this area are common from anterior and middle cerebral. Then you will have this anterior communicating artery which is connecting the both side anterior cerebral and here is the posterior communicating which is connecting this internal carotid with the posterior cerebral artery. So in this way you can see that there is a formation of this 
polygonal arterial arcade and this arcade is present on the base of brain. Now here, if you will see the uh, uh, position of the circle of willis inside the cranial cavity, so for that we have to remove the bones. And once you will remove the bones, you are able to see the uh, location and exact formation of the circle of willis. So we have removed first the cervical vertebrae. So now you can see the entry of both the vertebral arteries through the foramen magnum. Now what we will do is we will remove this bone which is occipital bone. So you know that occipital bone consists of the foramen magnum and here once you will remove the occipital bone, now you can appreciate that these vertebral arteries now come on the ventral surface of your brain stem. Now here we have removed this uh, temporal bone and you know that temporal bone have having uh, this uh, carotid canal. So once you will remove the temporal bone, now you can see the entry of your internal carotid artery. Now here you have to notice that internal carotid artery is not going straight, but you can see the spiral course of this internal carotid artery. So this spiral course of internal carotid artery inside the cranial cavity is known as carotid siphon. And this carotid siphon is very well appreciable here that it is not going straight but it is making a multiple loops which you can appreciate very clearly. Now this internal carotid artery will reach up to the anterior perforating substances which are present on the base of the brain. Clear? So now here you can appreciate that these two vertebral arteries are joining together to form this basilar artery. This basilar artery is dividing into the two posterior cerebral artery. On the contrary, this other side, you will have the two internal carotid arteries. Now, these two internal carotid arteries also enter inside the cranial cavity through the carotid canal. And here, the most important thing which you are able to appreciate that this internal carotid artery is making a multiple turn and its final turn is going to divide or terminate into the anterior cerebral and middle cerebral artery. Now here you can see that the, this internal carotid artery is communicating with the posterior cerebral artery with the help of this connection and this connection is known as posterior communicating artery. Apart from that here you can see that these are the two anterior cerebral artery which are connected to each other by the anterior communicating artery and these are the two po posterior communicating arteries. So in this base of brain you can see that there is a formation of arterial arcade with the help of the anastomosis between the branches of the basilar artery and between the branches of internal carotid artery. So now what are the further branches of circle of willis? How the circle of willis supply the brain? Now my dear students, whenever you are having the branches of the circle of willis, we will divide them broadly into the two part cortical branches and the central branches of the circle of willis. Now cortical branches are smaller and they supply only the adjacent surface of the different lobes of the brain. But the central branches are more important because the central branches are responsible for the deeper supply. That means you know that if you will see the brain, in the brain, in the this shadow, you can see there is a presence of the deeper organs, deeper part of the brain, like internal capsule, like corpus striatum, like thalamus. So these are not superficially placed. You can see in this shadow that they are very deeply placed. So to supply these deeply placed areas of the brain, you need the deep branches and these deep branches are known as central branches. And how these central branches will reach to the brain? They have to puncture the brain and by the puncturing, they will reach to the deeply placed area. So the central branches are responsible to supply the deeper part of the brain like thalamus, corpus striatum, internal capsule. And these central branches are known as perforating branches. Why perforating? Because they have to puncture the brain to enter and they will reach to the deeper placed areas. So these central or perforating branches grouped in four areas. One is enteromedial, enterolateral, posteromedial and posterolateral group. Now in this image you can see that this is the circle of willis and from this circle of willis you will have enteromedial group 
So these are the enteromedial group. Then you will have enterolateral group. You will have the posteromedial group. Then you will have posterolateral group. So these branches, if you will see, they are central branches, they are longer, and they will pierce the substance of brain to reach into the deeper placed areas. Now, some of these deeper branches are also known as striate arteries. Now, these striate arteries or striate branches are mainly comes from enteromedial and enterolateral groups of the this branches or the central branches of circle of villus. Now, there is a one very important question about these branches that whatever the branches are arising from the circle of villus, they are end arteries. Now, what is the meaning of this word end arteries? Here, what you are able to see that arteries are anastomosing on the base. Now, which arteries are anastomosing? One is your internal carotid, another is the posterior cerebral. But the branches which arises from these arteries will not anastomose. That means this is your internal carotid artery and this is the branch arising from internal carotid artery. Now, it is having an anastomosis with the posterior cerebral artery. Now, this posterior cerebral is also giving the branch and this branch is also supplying the deeper part of the brain. But this artery branch and this branch will not anastomose. It will supply an independent area. This will supply an independent area. So, it is said that whatever the anastomosis in between the arteries is going to take place it is always take place outside the brain in on the base. It is not the uh, anastomosis inside the substance of brain. The anastomosis is taking place outside the substance of brain. So outside the substance of brain, that means on the inferior surface of the brain, you are able to see anastomosis. I am not saying outside the cranial cavity. I am saying the anastomosis inside the cranial cavity, but it is not in the substance of brain. Once the artery enter into the substance of brain, this is become an independent branch. There should be no anastomosis between the adjacent branches and that's why these branches act as an end artery. That means if this artery will block, the area of brain supplied by this branch is going to undergo ischemic changes. So this is the important concept to understand that circle of villus is a anastomosis of the internal carotid and vertebral arteries, but their branches are not going to anastomose with each other and these branches are acting, acting as a end arteries. That means the anastomosis is not taking place inside the substance of brain and whatever the anastomosis is going to take, it is placed only outside the brain. That means you will have the anastomosis on the base of the brain. So, these branches enter through the brain, the branches enter in the brain through the anterior perforating substance and where you will find the anterior perforating substance near the optic chiasma and these may enter through the posterior perforating substance which are lies in, in near the mammillary body. So, what do you mean by these perforating substance? Now, see, there are two things to understand that if you will have a living person and if you are going to observe a, any intracranial surgeries, you will find no perforating substance. But when you are having the whole brain in dissection hall, which has been fixed by the formalin, in that brain you will find the perforating substance. Why it is a feature of the cadaveric brain, not a living brain? Because when you will take out the specimen of the brain from the cranial cavity, the branches which are entering into the brain they will turn out, torn out. You have to break those arteries. So you pulled those branches which are entering into the brain while removing the brain from the cranial cavity. So when you will remove the brain from the cranial cavity, the branches, those are entering into the brain, now pulled out. So the entry points appear as a multiple sieve-like appearance which are known as perforating substances. So the perforating substance designation refer to the both location on the ventral surface of the brain and these are the small perforation which appears when the numerous small penetrating arteries that supply the areas are pulled away. Because when you are removing the 
brain from the cranial cavity, you are actually forcefully pulling the brain. And once you are take out the brain, the branches which are entering is now come out and you are pulled these branches outside. So the entry points of these arteries appear as a perforating areas. So here you will find multiple perforations here and you will find multiple perforation here. Now this area is near the optic chiasma and this area near the mammillary body. So this is again a question of your exam that in so many time spotting areas you will have the these marking on these areas and you will have the question what are these areas and what is the use of these areas. So these areas are perforating substance. These perforating substance are appear because these allow the multiple arteries to enter into the brain to supply deeply placed areas. So these are the areas for the central branches of the circle of Willis. Now what is the functional significance of the circle? Now blood supply to half of the brain is provided by internal carotid and vertebral on that side. That means if you are talking about the right side, then right side is supplied by the right vertebral artery and right internal carotid artery. And this respective stream come together in the posterior communicating artery at a point. Now these streams come at a point where the pressure of the two equal and at that point there is no mixing of the blood. Now what does it mean? The meaning is that you can see in this diagram that this is your right internal carotid artery of right side. This is vertebral artery of right side. Now what is happening here that this is the left vertebral artery. Now these both vertebral arteries is joining to form a common artery which is known as basilar artery. Now this basilar artery is dividing into the two branches. These are the posterior cerebral artery and this is the posterior communicating artery between the internal carotid and posterior cerebral. Now here you can see that the blood which is entering through, through the right vertebral is black in color. For the study purpose we are using this black color. Now this black color area is not going to mix this shaded area in the same lumen. Try to understand that the blood of the left vertebral and blood of the right vertebral both is going into a common lumen of basilar artery but still this will remain separate though they are running into the same lumen the blood flow is common through a tube but they there is no mixing of the blood the right half of the basilar artery consists of the blood of right vertebral and left half of the basilar artery is having the blood from the left vertebral. Now the same blood will enter into the posterior cerebral of respective side. So you will find that there is a very minimal mixing or almost no mixing occurs in the blood of the right and left vertebral artery. In the same way here you can see that this is the blood of right internal carotid. Now you know that there is an anastomosis is there. So is the blood of the internal carotid is going to mix with the blood of vertebral artery answer is no. So at one point this is the point in posterior communicating where the blood of this internal carotid and blood of this vertebral artery is meeting but they are not mixing. Why they are not mixing because you can see here that a point where the pressure of two is equal. So because the pressure in both the arteries are equal so the mixing of the blood will not take place in the posterior communicating artery. So my dear students, you have to understand that in this whole system of circle of Willis, there is no mixing of the blood between the different arteries. Here you will find that even in the anterior communicating, the blood of your right internal and blood of left internal carotid is also not mixing. Here you can see the blood of left internal and left vertebral is not mixing. So the blood of the two vertebral artery, the blood of two internal carotid artery and blood of same side vertebral internal carotid artery is not going to mix at all. Why they are not going to mix? Because the pressure is same. So the two streams of the blood from the vertebral artery remain separated 
and on the same side in the lumen on the base in the basilar artery and they never mix they do not mix or if the mixing is also there and it is a very minimal mixing so therefore what is happening that the right half of the brain is supplied by the right vertebral artery and right internal carotid artery in the same way the left half of the brain is receiving the blood from the left internal carotid and left vertebral artery so this is your midline and if you will pass this midline you will realize that this is the right side vessels which are supplying the right brain these are the left side vessels which are supplying the left brain so there is no mixing of the blood is taking place clear so now if however the internal carotid or vertebral artery is occluded now see when the mixing occur or when the one artery is allow uh, the area of other artery to supply it is only possible once there is a occlusion of a artery so suppose if there is a internal carotid or vertebral of one side is get occluded the blood pressure forwards or backward across that point will change and to compensate the blood supply because the blood flow is reduces the blood pressure is changes now the blood will cross that point of the mixing clear so the arterial circle permits the blood to flow across the midline when the internal carotid or vertebral artery of one side is occluded suppose this artery get occluded now what will happen if this artery is occluded the blood which is entering here is not sufficient so the pressure will change on both the side of this point so now this black color area will go and it will now supply this area which supposed to be supplied by the blood of right internal carotid so it is the only thing which you have to understand that the blood will cross the point of the mixing only when there is a change in the pressure and one of the condition is when there is a occlusion occurs but my dear students it is a slow and progressive process so obstruction if occurs very slowly then this gradient pressure gradient is also allow to change the uh, blood supply if there is a sudden obstruction occurs then this circle of villus is not sufficient to compensate the blood supply of that area so this is always a question that a slowly progressive obstruction may be compensated for by the opposite side of blood vessels or your internal carotid artery through the circle of villus so common site of obstructions are first is the point of commencement of internal carotid in the neck and second is when the internal carotid artery passes through the cavernous sinus a slow, slowly progressive obstruction may be compensated now this is again i am saying because this is a very commonly asked question and this you have to understand that it is only possible when the arterial blood will compensate the area of other artery when there is a slow progressive obstruction will take place now if there is sudden occlusion occurs it may cause death from the infarction of the entire anterior and middle cerebral territories and sometimes it may happen in the area of posterior cerebral artery so my dear students now you should have this idea in your mind that though the blood is entering into a common circle but still the blood is not going to mix why the blood is not going to mix because the pressure is very important factor and if the artery is going to mix the blood with the different part it is only possible to compensate the blood supply of the other artery when there is a progressive occlusion occurs if there is a sudden occlusion of the artery occurs then other artery is not sufficiently supply that area and that will lead to the cerebrovascular accidents so what is the clinical anatomy you should write in exam one is the congenital aneurysm aneurysm means dilatation of the wall of artery so congenital aneurysm occurs most commonly at the site where two arteries join in the formation of circle so at the point of the junction you will find the aneurysms are more common why the points of the 
meeting points are having this aneurysm more because there is a deficiency of tunica media layer. Now this is again a question of your exam. What is the cause of aneurysm? The only answer is deficiency or thinning of the tunica media. So because of this reason, where you will have the meeting of two point, there is a weakness occur in the artery and that will lead to the local dilatation. Now this local dilatation of the circle of villus appears like a blister and this blister like dilatation is known as Barry's aneurysm of circle of villus. So whenever you are writing the congenital aneurysm in the circle of villus, that means the congenital means since birth, the patient is having a blister like Barry's aneurysm in the circle of villus. Now many times the patient will remain asymptomatic and in autopsy after death when you will see the uh, postmortem in autopsies you will find that that fellow is having the Barry's aneurysm. So Barry's aneurysms are not always going to rupture but if they rupture now if they rupture then what will happen they will lead to the subarachnoid hemorrhage that means the bleeding will occur into the subarachnoid space. Now in such conditions there is a severe pain in the headache, patient is have severe headache which is sudden in onset followed by mental confusion. Now sometimes in such condition the patient may die. So my dear students, now at the end of this session what you are able to understand, first is what do you mean by the circle of villus, where you will find the anastomosis, second thing is the branches of the circle of villus act as end arteries because the branches are not going to anastomose inside the substance. Once the arteries will, branches of the circle of villus arises and they pierce the brain substance, they are acting as end arteries. The another thing is that what is the meaning of your Barry's aneurysm. Barry's aneurysm means blister like dilatation. And the most important functional significance is that the right half of the brain is supplied by the right arteries and left half, the half, half of the brain is supplied by the left arteries because there is no mixing of the blood occurs into the circle of villus and it is happen only when there is an occlusion of one artery which has to be progressive and slow in onset. If there is a sudden onset then these arteries are not able to supply the area of other artery. So this is all about the session. Thank you.